Okay, so in the last lesson, we learned how to make a model such as this. And today we're going to learn how to make this into a physical object. Okay, so first we have to export it um, as an STL. I already did this, but yeah, save it as whatever you want to. Um, I named it uh, Knight Rushing because he's like rushing forward. And then we're going to want to export it into your slicer of choice. Uh, my slicer that I use is Chi2Box. It's free and it's what I've been using forever. So that's just the one I use. Okay, so here we are in Chi2Box. And what we're going to do is import our model. So we go here um, and then find your model. Okay, so here's my model. Right. And normally what I do is I uh, rotate it on the x-axis by uh, negative 45 degrees, so it's like this. Um, you don't really want to have like, uh, because the foot is always flat, you don't want that to be completely flat uh, because when you try to support that, it's gonna just make little bumps. So you wanna have it uh, at an angle, at least that's what I've been told and that's what I do, <laughs> okay? And then we're going to um, go here to like the, the supports area. And I like to do like a bunch of light uh, supports. And personally, I use a sphere, but you can do none. But spheres, uh, they tend to leave these like, like little circles when you take the support off. But if you do no sphere like this, um, in my experience, it tends to leave like a hole um, like an empty hole. So I would rather like shave this off or sand it down than have a hole and like try to fill it. So that's why I use uh, the sphere, okay? But I don't um, start like that. I just go to, we're on light, we're in sphere, and I just press this all. And this will kind of automatically generate the supports. And I don't just leave it like this because I, I've never actually just tried to do this. Maybe I will one day, but I don't want to steer you wrong, okay? So sometimes you'll get supports like this where I actually don't know if this one is necessary. So we're going to delete that. Uh, it probably is, but I'm going to delete it anyway. And this, this probably needs more support because it's kind of flat here. And it's only like supported by these like few uh, supports. So yeah, it's a good start, but um, I like to add my own. Okay, so here we go. This is subtract and this is add. Um, so I usually start uh, by the feet and then just kind of like where you think it needs additional support is where you should put them. Like right here, this is unsupported, but it's like a pointy spot. So maybe I'll put one there. That one's probably fine. Um, this, like, I don't know if this one support here by itself can like support this side armor. So I'm just gonna put one there and then put one there to kind of reinforce it. Um, and this handle, let's talk about this handle. It's only being supported by this one support and it's kind of going up where it's like kind of thick by itself and to not have any other supports that's kind of risky because this is going into the resin getting pulled out and then in again so you want to probably reinforce that one as well so i'm just going to go like one here to the side one here to the side and then up the shaft a little bit and here uh, you want to support any unsupported areas that the thing missed. This might be okay. Maybe I'll put one there. And then one right here uh, to kind of support that. And then uh, maybe, maybe one more like this. But yeah, I'm not going to do this whole process, but you, you kind of get it, right? Like if there's a spot where you think it's gonna maybe need another few supports or so, um, we can, we can, you know, support it manually after the, uh, the automatic supports. 
Okay, so let's actually just um, speed this up. And I will see you when we're done. Okay, I'm gonna call that good, probably. Um, now there's like a chance that I missed a spot, and if you do, it's not a big deal, you just do it again. Uh, actually, I'm gonna add a couple more here. Like... This... Yeah, I think that'll be better. Um, and here I, you want to save this in two ways. Okay. So the first one I do is I save the selected model as a project. And what this does is, um, it saves all the, um, like supporting. So if I did miss something, I could load that project up and I could just add the supports that I missed. Okay. So we're going to do that right now. Save. Select a model as ta uh, night rushing is fine. Okay, so now this project is saved, and then now we want to save this model as a, like the SDL. Okay, so save as select a model, uh, and what this does is this saves it as an STL file with um, all the supports already baked in. Okay, if I were to import that STL file, so let's do that right now. Um, it'll come out like this and you will not be able to like add more supports. So like when you try, it'll think you're trying to add supports to the bottom of the supports. So that is why we save it as a project first and then save it as the selected model. Okay, and now what you want to do is you can slice this um, to, to have it print on your printer, but I like to take it to uh, any cubic slicer because um, that's the, the, the brand of 3D printers that I own, okay? Let's go there. Okay, so here we are in the Anycubic Slicer, and we are going to print this on um, the M7 Pro. I have the M3 Max and the Mono X6KS. Um, the M7 Pro is, like, the fastest, so that is, you know, what I'm choosing for this one, okay? So import your model. And then I, I just like how smooth it looks uh, in this slicer. So yeah, and then here you could, if you wanna print more than one, you could clone it. Uh, I'm just gonna do two. And then um, I actually put these together so that they're kinda like connected like that. Um, this is because like when I'm washing it, I don't want both of these kinda like rattling around. I want them to be kinda together. That's just how I do it. You don't have to do it that way, but yep. And then uh, I am using ABS like resin, which um, I usually just use the default setting, default standard resin setting. Okay, so let's slice it. And then here it has the like the volume, so about 13 milliliters, how much it costs. I don't know how they come up with that price, but um, and it's gonna take about an hour and 10 minutes. So let's put that into our printer and see how it goes. Okay, so I saved it into this USB drive, and then we're just gonna turn the printer on. And then find the file, I named it uh, just Nights, and then press print, and then come back when the print's done. And then once the print's done, I take my like lunch tray and I line it with paper towel. And you gotta make sure you are wearing um, like gloves for this because you do not want any resin on your hands. At least that's what I've been told. And then here we have our build plate. We're gonna put that on our tray. Um, turn the printer off. And then take it to our work table. And then here I have this like metal scraper that makes it super easy to get under that uh, support. And I just scrape it off. And then what I like to do, I don't wipe, like I don't wash the whole build plate. I just wipe the build surface so that it's 
just um, nice and clean, ready for the next print. And then when we have that, I just put that back onto the printer and I put the lid back on. Okay, so back to the model. Uh, we're gonna stick it into this basket and then I'm just kind of like wiping off like any excess resin that got onto the gloves. And then here we are taking the lid off of our uh, wash and cure machine and then we're washing it in 99% isopropyl alcohol. And then put the lid back on, turn on your machine, make sure it's on wash mode, and then I just do the standard two minutes. And then while that's going, I clean off my scraper. And then I use the paper towel to wipe the lunch tray and then any excess resin that got onto my fingers. And then I'm gonna reline the tray with my paper towels. And then at this point, we are allowed to take our gloves off because we are not going to be working with any uncured resin. Um, so I, I like to reuse my gloves because you know they don't really get that messy. Um, but when you are doing this, make sure you are not touching the outside of your gloves because there will be, you know, like trace amounts of the resin. And, uh, and you just want to make sure you don't get any on your hands. Okay, so once the wash is done, you can turn it off and then take it out of the basket. You could give it a good shake. And then we put the lids back on. And we are done with that. And here I just take out the models and I usually let them like uh, dry. The, the alcohol will dry pretty quickly, um, but sometimes it could get like stuck into like little crevices. So I like to hold it upside down so that all the alcohol drips out in. And this is what it looks like um, when it's completely dry. I am just splitting the knights in two and we're gonna take the supports off of this singular one. Here I like to take some clippers and clip the sword part because I don't wanna accidentally break the, you know, the sword's pretty thin, so we're gonna do that. But then for the rest of this, we can just kind of like pull at it. Um, and if I made the model correctly, hopefully nothing breaks off. Okay, just carefully remove all the supports. And sometimes uh, like tweezers like this might come in handy for those like inside supports where it's like supported on top of the model. And the, these supports you, you usually are like a lot thinner, so yeah. So tweezers like this really help. And then once you are done, I get some Gorilla Glue and I just do like a little dot on each foot and then press firmly onto the base and then kind of just let it dry for maybe about 15 minutes. And then once it's on the base, we can cure it. So, so take it back to the wash and cure machine, but this time we are curing it under the UV light. So once that's done, um, we're ready to paint. Um, so I'm gonna take this uh, paint holder. I actually designed this myself and there's some blue sticky tack and I just stick the model on top of there and then it'll be ready to paint. And let me know if this is like blasphemous, but I've been experimenting with this new technique of painting where I don't use any primer and I just paint like opaque paints 
right onto the model. So as you can see here, I am just doing like a beige for the face, gray for the cloth, um, some leather brown for the straps, and uh, I'm using gray for the, like the, I don't know what that's called, the, the night feathers as well. Um, but yeah, just uh, the gold and the silver are particularly uh, hard to put on just black resin. So I, I do actually have to do a few passes of, of these two. But yeah, I'm just kind of laying it on thick. But here I realize the silver is a little too silver. Um, so I decided to uh, wash it down with some uh, dark tone with a dark tone wash. And then that kind of like brings it back to like, you know, realistic levels of, of shine. You know, it makes it look more dirty, more gritty. And then we're pretty much done. What do you think? So after all the lessons, this is what we are left with. And now you know every step that I take to go from this to this. So I hope you really enjoyed this series. It was a lot of fun uh, making it, and it was a lot of hard work. I uh, spent a lot of time uh, doing it, but I hope you learned a lot. And if you still have any more questions, don't be afraid to ask. I always respond to my comments. So uh, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna work on next, but I do have a my first ever unboxing video, so. Um, look forward to that. It's kind of a surprise what it is. Um, but yeah, if you have been with me throughout this whole thing, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.